So just to add some extra tiles and for fun, uh, let's do the decor grass tile set, drag that in here. It will automatically create tiles for this. And then we can just um, draw some tiles where we need them to be. So on tile map, I will do this on the top layer so that we can draw onto the grass. We can actually select all of these tiles if we want. And then let's go to random mode and then just left click where we want to have some random doodads show up in our game world. So just an easy way to add in some more detail. Now let's add in another terrain. So I'll have tile set desert and we have to be in tile set view for that. So drag tile set desert into here, automatically create the tiles. And basically we just kind of repeat the steps. So we'll take these tiles and we'll draw whatever island shape we want. So I can do something like this here. Then we'll have the edge tiles where we need them to be. So let's get all of those going. These tiles are pretty simple to use, so it should be quite straightforward. Just kind of where there's an edge, then it should show an edge. And that's pretty much it. So let's do the top bit here. So corner, corner, and then the edge tiles. So then we might also want to uh, place some additional objects into the game world over here. Um, to kind of organize our game level, let's right click and I will add a child node. Let's do a node 2D. I'll rename this to be world objects. Okay, and then let's just drag all these resource nodes into there, world objects. Okay, and now if we need to, we can minimize this menu um, so that uh, we can see the important stuff in our game level. So let's add a cactus to our desert and I'm going to save this cactus as another scene. Let's go to objects and I'll just create a folder. I'll call this uh, doodads. So this will just be for objects that aren't placed by the tile map, but also aren't necessarily harvestable. So, okay. Then we could just call it cactus one, I guess. Let's jump into the scene and I'll right click on it, add a uh, collision shape. Let's look for body, static body 2D, right click on it, add a child node. Um, so we need a collision collider. So a collision shape 2D. We'll click on shape and let's do a capsule shape. Just make it make sense for the object we're creating a collision for. Uh, remember that the top bit is kind of above the ground. So we only need to create the collision where the object touches the ground with this uh, top down perspective. So we can save that. I go to our game level. We can see that this still has a collision shape. So we can duplicate it and move the duplicate over here. We can also go into the doodads folder and duplicate the cactus for let's say uh, cactus two and jump into cactus two. So we just need to change the texture out. So let's load from art gathers exterior objects desert and we'll have uh, cactus two. Okay, now we can go back into the game level and then we can drag a cactus two into the scene. Now make sure that in these scenes, you actually uh, reset the transform to zero zero. So uh, when we're placing the nodes, they should be wherever our cursor is centered. So rename that there. And we can also call the node cactus type two, if we want, go into cactus one, change the transform of the base node to zero zero here as well. Then I'll rename the node cactus underscore type two. Sure. Let's go to the game level and now let's make sure that our cactus nodes get placed correctly. So I'm going to drag this one down here and then we can drag a cactus type two into the scene as well. Okay. Maybe next we want to use the desert tree. So let's create a desert tree that we can use as a resource node by duplicating our resource, uh, resource node tree pine. So I'll duplicate that and let's just call it tree desert. We'll jump into that. Maybe the tree desert has a starting resources of seven. We'll leave the pickup type of the wood the same. It's still a tree. Maybe we could change the color of the wood to represent a different type of wood. And the depleted effect, everything else would basically be the same. Um, just got to look at our node here and change the sprite, really. So for sprite 2D, we're going to load. Let's go into art, gathers exterior, objects, desert, and then Let's grab the savanna tree. I'll rename this up here to be savanna tree. And maybe we'll also call the scene file uh, tree desert savanna. 
just uh, being a little bit more specific there. Okay, and the collision shape, let's expand that, make it a little bigger. This tree is bigger, so we want it to be kind of centered there. Okay, and then basically we can just go to the game level and we can bring in this tree, kind of like so. And let's bring in a couple of them. Oh, the, the last thing that we might actually want to change as well, um, the center point here, that's the position that it's going to use for the explosion. So we may actually want to come in here and edit it. We can move the sprite up a bit. So the sprite 2D, I'll hit W to go into move mode. Let's move that up. So the center point is the actual location of the tree. So I kind of want the base of the tree to be centered there. And then let's move the collision shape up there to the center as well. So now if we check game view, that's going to update the positions a little bit for our nodes. So let's adjust those. And uh, tree two, tree three, okay, tree two, some, something like that. Okay, now let's hit play. We can go down there and we can harvest from our trees. Okay, a couple cleanup things. Let's also take these resource nodes and move them into uh, world objects. Also take the cactuses and move them inside of that as well. And I can close the world objects uh, menu. We really only need to drag and drop stuff into that. And then lastly, on the tile map for tile map, if we look at the water layer, there's still water under here. And because of the way everything's set up, we actually want to remove those water nodes. So let's use the erase tool and um, we can use pencil mode, hit Q. Actually, let's use the rect mode. It'll be quicker. And then just drag a box here to remove the water tiles under there and there as well. So that'll make it so that we can actually walk on this ground. If we hit play, now we can go down, walk onto our island. We'll switch to the axe and we can harvest our tree. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yep. And this one as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, another thing that's kind of going on here, the hot bars ended up uh, below the screen. So if we took it, if we if we go out, take a look at our game level, we can see that's the case here. Our hot bar is showing off center by a bit. So if we look at layout and transform. We should be able to reset this transform like so. And to make sure that we don't accidentally um, mess with the transform here, I'm, I must have used the move tool on this hotbar node. Let's take the hotbar node and let's lock it into place here. I'll also take the resource display and lock it as well. I just make sure that we don't mess with those, the positions on them. So if we hit play, uh, we can go back to our main game view and we can see that the position is corrected for that. So we can still like switch to you know, the different tools and use them on our trees, just like we would have expected before. Gather all the resources. So here we can see one issue uh, I created, which is that we need to make sure that the world objects actually uh, can sort based on their Y position. Um, let's see if we can test that out in the editor right now by going to remote view, expand to world objects. And then let's go down here to Y sort enabled. I'll check that. And now if we go back to the scene view, you can see that our character can once again sort based on the Y position. So that means uh, in the actual editor, when the game stopped, we just need to take world objects, go to ordering and check Y sort enabled. So that will make all of the child objects also sort based on the Y sort, uh, just like the game level already had set up. So just for fun, I'm going to add in another biome over here to the left. So uh, let's go to tile map view. Let's see if I can find the dark sprite sheet right here. So tile set dark, I'll drag that into tile set view, automatically create the tiles. Okay, that's done. Now we can go to tile map on the ground. We want to come over here and just kind of lock the position of the tile map as well. Yeah, okay. So ground view, Q for selection mode, uh, turn off eraser tool and I'll do rect select so I can draw some ground easily here. And then let's do the side tiles. Okay, zooming in a bit might help actually. And we have the bottom tiles and lastly, the top. Okay, and these little corner pieces too. Okay, so that pretty much looks good. So now let's add a, another type of harvestable tree. I'll duplicate the pine and let's do tree dark. Let's open up that scene. We'll change the sprite node here to be something else. So we'll load from the project and art gathers exterior objects dark. And let's grab a tree here. 
Um, suppose we could just use the kind of bushy berry-like tree and the collision shape is probably okay as it is. To make things a little bit more interesting rather than just harvesting normal ward, let's make a dark ward. So not in resources types, but in um, pickups, let's duplicate the pickup brown ward to be pickup uh, ward dark. So we'll double click into that and then let's change the icon here. So I'm going to load art gathers exterior. Let's see resources wood gray and then for pickup wood we need to change the resource type so we had that in items resources resource wood so we'll duplicate the resource and we're going to call it resource wood dark and we can double click in that resource and we change the display name to dark wood we'll change the texture to uh, let's load that same texture file so resources wood gray and I'll change the resource name down here to be dark wood. Okay, so now in pickup ward, we just need to set the resource ward dark as the um, actual pickup item. Okay, and now we go back to this dark tree. I'm going to rename it. We'll call it dark tree. Uh, but actually, in, in this scene, I can see that I added in the wrong one. This is the tree pine. So I'm going to actually don't save this scene. And we're going to repeat the step with the um, tree dark. Okay, so basically here we just change the pickup type. So let's load a pickup type from the project. That would be in objects, pickups, dark wood. Okay, and then the node is going to be called dark tree. And the sprite is going to use the dark tree sprite. So art gathers exterior objects, dark, uh, dark tree small. Okay, now we can save that. Um, let's take a look at the scene here and make sure that the pickup is the right scene. So I'm going to open that scene. Okay, and that is the dark wood. Okay, now we can go to the game level. And I'm going to place a couple of these dark trees. And let's just pop them in there. Kind of like so. I'll move them all under world objects. Let's finish the bridge here. So in tile map, floating platform, we'll add these to the top layer. So make sure we're in pencil mode. Uh, turn off random again. And then add those rafts so we can get over there. Then we need to change the water and just uh, remove the collisions. So uh, water tiles, use the alternate tile. And then just paint over the spaces where we should be able to walk. And now we can hit play. We'll be able to walk over here to the dark island. And also don't forget to remove the water tiles under the island. Or you could change them to the walkable water if you want it. Probably doesn't matter, actually. So if, if you want to use walkable water, we could just drag this for the size and shape of the island, like so. You'll never be able to see it, so it won't make a difference here. And then now we should be able to walk onto the island, like so, and harvest our tree. And you can see this is giving us now a different type of resource. This is the dark wood, which is different from the normal wood we get over here. So you can see those are adding different inventory slots. Then we have our stone as a third option. And if we want to make the dark island a little bit more interesting, we can add in the decor tile set into this. And make sure you're in tile set view. Decor. Yes, automatically create. And let's draw some of these decor tiles onto here on the top layer. So we can place some flowers, some mushrooms, some random sparkle dots, maybe a summoning circle and some colorful flowers and basically call it good so we can of course walk onto that island and see the cosmetic changes there